anyway, um, but, the, but yeah, in terms of, how impo- of, of important things, I just think the, it's worth talking about the, uh, the, the lady from the Syrian National Council for a moment, because um, uh, she's an interesting character, and uh, it's very interesting. You only have to dig into her background a little, this, this, this lady. Um, uh, she, um, she's called Basma Kodmani, and she's listed as an international uh, delegate, and uh, we've got a photo of her coming out, and, um, you know, she's straight up and down, Council on Foreign Relations, you know, the, she works for the Syrian National Council, uh, for the, she's the executive director of the Arab Reform Initiative, which is admitted on the Council on Foreign Relations own re- website that it's a, it's a CFR project. You know, they say they set it up in 2005, and they hand over um, uh, uh, the financial reins to the Centre for European Reform, which is worth looking up if you want to do some Googling, people. There's your homework, Centre for European Reform. Um, but anyway, so it's very interesting to see the, the, the Syrian opposition being run out of Washington and being, and clearly that's been very, very high up the agenda uh, this year at Bilderberg. And, you know, and I said I had the weird thing of just sitting there in the hotel after they'd left, looking up at the bar and um, uh, the screen in the bar and seeing um, uh, Fawad, uh, Fouad Ajami, who's a, who's a uh, uh, you know, he's a uh, Bilderberger, up on CNN talking about how it's going to be, you know, as bloody as, as, as Libya in, in Syria. So, you know, I feel like it's been, I think some things got signed off this weekend. Um, so By the I, way, I uh, to, to look her up, just look her up and look at her background, and look at look at the background of the Syrian National Council and how it, how it was put together, and who's who are the people that are the spokespeople for it, and you know they're just big. and Charlie, and Charlie, that photo you posted of her in your Guardian story yesterday was just amazing and. Uh, just incredible how angry she was with her arms crossed, one of the few limos that didn't have dark enough windows. And you see them six, seven, eight years ago preparing the fake opposition, funding al-Qaeda to attack Syria, then saying we've got to invade Syria, they're al-Qaeda, uh, blowing up police stations, engaging in massacres, and then just like throwing babies out of incubators, that wasn't true. Hillary's up there again saying we've got to invade boots on the grounds. That- yeah. Green light, not just air bombardment, but uh, uh, ground invasion of Syria, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the big ally of Iran. This shows the whole agenda. And you go back decades and you get their documents, they really are planning our world. And they're in there in all these little break off meetings, uh, bid rigging, uh, getting money, fice, uh, price fixing, getting government contracts. I mean, this is the real global mafia, Charlie. Yeah, and this is. A- Sharply says, you know, that's why they've got the the Russians there. They've got Gary Kasparov. You know, they've got a sort of an, uh, and Ana, uh, Anatoly Chubais, and they've got a kind of slightly anti-Putin group of Russians there who who can who they they can work with to because they're going to need some Russians and they're going to need a sort of power block within Russia to go into Syria. It's not not totally straightforward, you know. So anyway, he's, he's he thinks that's a, a scary sign as well, um, you know, for Syria. Well, yeah, Kasparov's been trying to overthrow over there. And again, I'm not saying Putin's a great guy, but he's not the bankers over here running my country. He isn't putting 30,000 drones in the sky. Uh, he didn't, I didn't have TSA groping old ladies and molesting children and hiring child molesters. Incredible information. Charlie Skelton, London Guardian. Mitt Romney, his big article going viral at Bilderberg 2012. Coming up, breaking news. The Bilderberg leaks. Infowars.com exclusive. There are liberty lovers and defenders of truth and justice all across this world. And from myself and the crew at Infowars.com, we salute the people that came from England, Germany, Canada, all over the U.S., uh, Hawaii, California, Michigan, Texas, Louisiana, Maine. Thousands were there over the five days. Uh, it had to be about 700 at one time when it peaked Saturday evening, or was it Friday night? It was just incredible. As many as 20 bullhorns going are all around the building, seven at one time. Charlie Skelton, the London Guardian, is our guest. It's just gone up at Infowars.com. We worked last night and this morning with Paul, but we only sent him because of being on the road with Internet, I don't know, 10, 15 photos. We're going to be adding more. We're going to add scans as a PDF as soon as we get back to this. Leaked Bilderberg documents, nationalism is dangerous. InfoWars exclusively obtained senators' notes from 1966 CONFAB. I'm going to have Paul add minutes, it's invitations, it's minutes, 
it's talking points, it's, and then it's his notes on people's speeches, what was discussed there. I mean, it is, it's hundreds and hundreds of pages. Aaron's barely had time to read over it. It's blowing Aaron completely away. I wanted him to give Charlie Skelton a report now. This is only the beginning. In fact, we need to get added to Paul's article, a editor's note, I know Paul's listening, that this is only the beginning. This is only a snapshot. This is the Bilderberg WikiLeaks. This is really the, the this, is, this is big. There's hundreds of pages of this. Aaron was up all night. We were up live streaming, connecting all this, confirming documents. A few of these documents were already released or in other National Archives, just a few of the hundreds of pages. Aaron had a whole backpack full of stuff people were giving him. Aaron, we got to get a hold of that guy. He's, he even had more. I don't know why we didn't. Nobody's bad, but I, I never heard the whole full story on. We only got part of it. And the guy, but, but I, mean, I mean, the point is, we, this is amazing. This is amazing what we've got. Bernhard's invitations, the big Nazi, the beginning of it. Uh, nationalism's bad. The head of the United Auto Workers, that's why we were given this by the union. They are really mad that they now are learning that the union sold them out in the 60s. Of course you did. It's not that unions are good or bad. They could be a force for good. They're for socialism, open borders, gun control, and, and, and their leaders are for NAFTA and GATT. They've been taken over. I would be for the unions of 100 years ago against the robber barons. Charlie Skelton, I'm going to have Aaron brief you here and going to give you guys the floor here because you know I'll jump in. But do you have any comments about this data link? Uh, because, because quite frankly, Infowars is playing this down. This is much bigger than even Watson's headline. I don't blame him with us just sending him, you know, snapshots of this and stuff, not understanding the full magnitude of it. But this is big, Charlie. What do you think of what we just said? Well, I'm very excited. I haven't my internet is currently down. Thank you very much, Virgin Media. Um, but uh, I, uh, I'm, wait I'm waiting with bated breath. It sounds like an amazing, uh, an amazing resource you've got your hands on, and um, it just, you know, you get it out there, and there's so many people that, that know so much about Bilderberg around the world that they will be able to pick it apart and, you know, pick out the, the highlights. And as you're doing yourself, picking out the, the significant uh, little, little bits, because you can learn so much from these, these sorts of documents. You can actually get, you know, the, I, I did my little bit this year to try and steer people back towards the early documents, because you can get such an understanding of what's going on from, from proper, you know, declassified cabinet papers and you know, Pentagon reports, et cetera, et cetera, the stuff that just leaks out. But you've got a slightly later leak. That's really good. And, um, you yeah, know, I'm very, very excited, obviously. And, uh, you know, people like Tony Gosling from, you know, Bilderberg.org, he's going to be looking at that and uh, reporting on that, I'm sure. Uh, so, you know, so many experts will be, uh, uh, will be picking up. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, Aaron Dykes, I'm going to... I urge all your, your, you know, all your listeners and viewers to just start looking back. A lot of these documents are online and just... Start piecing together, if they haven't already, you know, the links between the foundations and the intelligence services and Bilderberg and, and you know, the CIA. And, and it go, it's, it's a dark place, but it's, it's worth looking into. That's right. A lot of some of this stuff has leaked out in private archives and government archives. This has never been released. It's got the government red letter photocopying not to be released uh, and all the rest of it. Uh, but let's let's fade up Aaron Dykes to give you a quick 10-minute report or so, and to be fair to our next guest, we should just move him to the next hour to really give him the floor of this breaking news on TSA. If he can't do it, that's fine. We'll do it tomorrow. Uh, Aaron Dykes, you've got the floor. Give the data dump to Charlie Skelton of The Guardian. Well, Charlie, I'm glad you mentioned doing our homework because that's, of course, what we have to do. We essentially know the links. This is Skull and Bones. These are the Robert Barron Foundations who set up things like the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace and the other uh, foundation bodies to carry their world government quest forward even as they try to spin things and draw attention away from their massive wealth and power. But these documents come from 1966 from the private library collection of Senator Fred Harris. He's out of Oklahoma and he was a second year senator, uh, ended up being a two term senator. There he is at Bilderberg, personally invited by Prince Bernhard. We have the signature and the letterhead where he was invited. And he's being re-educated by all these dignitaries, so forth and so on, about how nationalism is dangerous. He's got it underlined in his handwritten notes under headers from each different speaker. Nationalism is dangerous with emphasis on is. Uh, other things like NATO is in trouble because common fears are reduced. And we know what this is all about because Prince Bernhard himself Himself spelled out the two-part agenda in the 1966 briefing. It was A, reorganizing NATO, and B, the future of world economic development 
particularly amongst industrialized versus de-industrialized nations. As you know, that means strengthening and building up funding for IMF, for the, uh, for the U.S. Agency for International Development, for the United Nations, different arms, and the rest of it, the International Bank for Work. Reconstruction and Development, GATT, all the rest of these bodies were in attendance on the meeting. They're on the official list. And of course, as we mentioned, Walter P. Reuther, the head of United Auto Workers, the biggest union at the time, he was also presiding over the International Conference for Free Trade. And he has, he boasts that he has more than 60 million workers at his hands crafting policy. They set up that year in 1966 the Wage Price Control Board, different mechanisms. But the irony is you've got these socialists for unions, which Alex mentioned could be good, but they're controlled by people like David Rockefeller, supposedly the top capitalist, meeting side by side with them, and that is what they're pursuing. And we also see them trying to strengthen these international bodies overall. They talk about NATO, how it's not only... Are we going? Okay, it looks like we lost him again. I'm Rob Dew, sitting shotgun here in the Central Texas Command Center, while Aaron, Alex, Rob Jacobson, and Richard Reeves are barreling down the highway. They've been everywhere. Another mic. They've been all oh, through. Did, did we get them back? I hear them in my ear now. Okay. Yeah, yeah we have them. Um, the, the microphone The microphone came unplugged. So just, I'll do it. I'll do it. It's XLR. All right, uh, go ahead. Uh, finish your point there, Aaron. Okay, are we live right now? Yes, you're Go live. ahead. Go so ahead. They are not only talking about how to build up international development mechanisms, they explicitly talk about using those mechanisms to control the food supply and pursue population develop sorry, population reduction. They also talk about how NATO needs to be, quote, reorganized, not only as a militaristic opposition to the Soviet Union, but as a way to further integrate Europe. They talk about that explicitly in the documents. That's from one Robert S. Bowie. He's a trilateral CFR, Bilderberger, you name it. He's also a John J. McCloy acolyte who also spoke at the conference, just obsessively talked about how dangerous nationalism is, how we cannot revert to a pre-1914 mentality, talked about how de Gaulle reviving nationalism in France was so dangerous, how it could spread to Germany, and on and on. John J. McCloy was not only a Skull and Bones member, he was the head of a number of very powerful organizations from the World Bank. He was a lawyer to the IG Farben Combine that was the backbone of the Nazi mechanism, and he was the chair of Chase Manhattan Bank, the chair of the Ford Foundation, the chair of the Council on Foreign Relations. He was even on the Warren Commission, and that's just one example of some of the most important people at this meeting. We have the list Zvignu Brzezinski, among others, at attendance in 1966. And as you well know, Charlie, all the stuff with Prince Bernhard being on, uh, at the very top of the IG Farben board during and before World War II connects directly with how Harriman, Prescott Bush, and other top Anglophiles, most of them connected to Skull and Bones, were financing and backing the Nazi mechanism for their own gain to unify Europe in the long run, also, of course, to profiteer off of it. The Netherlands banks were the intermediary so that no matter who won the war, they could quickly shift the assets, avoid blame, and basically avoid all prosecution. Any wow. comments on what he just broke down for you there? That's for me, I mean, just a couple of things that, that jumped out was, that, you know, obviously the IG Farben thing, which is, you know, the more that that's looked into, the better. And... You know, I mean, this is a this is a dark company. You know, they had IG Auschwitz next, to, you know, massive factory next to Auschwitz. I mean, these are they produced Zyklon B. I mean, this, this doesn't get worse than that. And uh, but you know, you mentioned the control of the food supply. I mean, isn't and you know, got Kissinger sitting there, didn't he? Isn't he the guy who suggested using food as a weapon? Um, food State, is Department, a weapon. State Department State Department memorandum State Department memorandum two hundred nineteen seventy three CIA joint memorandum adopted as U.S. policy by the executive branch via the Carnegie Endowment for Peace. Peace means when we're all dead. And that's yes. not it. That's why you talk about why they're so serious, and that's why they're so evil and focused. These are eugenicists. The Queen, her father, the British Royals, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Rockefellers and their secret eugenics meetings, funding the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, funding eugenics, funding racial sterilization laws in 34 states in the U.S. This is it. These are monsters. We've got to remember that. Yes, Charlie. 
And yeah. let me, I would just like to add that the document explicitly talks about the U.S. Agency for International Development being the one to pursue this population reduction. That is what Henry Kissinger is talking about in his Food as a Weapon document, NSM 200.